when we learned where the boss's room was with all the Sinclair, she introduced herself as the first mate of the Twin Hook Pirates. She... Gonna be very curious as to who this lady's name is. Cause... It could be me. Oh, this is a lady? Okay. We're gonna be fighting her, I'm sure. Certainly made a mess up there. Tell me who sent you. Arrival captain, or are you looking to collect my head for a bounty? Ah, uh, so you're the boss here. Sumi! Oh, I have to look this up. Sumi? As in, like, Captain Peter Pan? Yes, it is! Smee is Peter Pan! Twin Hook Pirates! That makes sense! Captain Hook? Okay. Okay, I'm I'm doing some research during this, because I honestly didn't think of Captain Hook, but honestly the red motif now makes a lot more sense for it as well. Smee describes him as an Irish, the only non-conformist among Captain Hook's crew, and managed stabbed without offense is portrayed in multiple pantomimes or movies of Peter Pan as a rather stupid but entertaining man. He is more interesting in loot, loot rather than hooks more evil pleasures. He typically represents a humorous side to pirating. Also portrays as a portly man with a bulbous nose and red cheese, so Barney and he hinted at a darker side. Ah. This is very, very interesting. I was not expecting a Peter Pan version. It kind of bleeds in fairy tale with, uh... Okay, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing first mate of the Twit Hope Pirates. I heard you wanted to see me. What, on an autograph? We were last informed that you were the second in command. We seek your superior. Tell us where they are whereabouts. Look, that ass has to be drowning in a bottle of fairy wine somewhere. Three sheets to the wind. So pretty much, who, so I pretty much run this joint, de facto and all. Well, you know. And you gotta understand our predicament. The perfume business has never been the most lucrative venture at this point. But we're just looking to branch out. A pure business decision. Devised by none other than yours truly. Understood, so you must have the information we seek. We are in search of a certain individual held hostage by this establishment. Hand over the information regarding his whereabouts. Hostage, what a crude choice of words. We prefer to call him our guest. Guest? Yeah, well then, how about a deal? Tell me everything you know about Queequeg. And I'll see to that your guest is looking for your safe... You're, you're looking for his safely returned. Besides, that guest of ours, he's a big shot, ain't he? LC something's team leader. Oh, and one of these, a friend of Queequeg, right? Tell me everything you know about Queequeg. What she's up to and who she's with and the last thing she said to you, I want to hear all of it. I'm sure there's no need to remind you of who's got the upper hand here. I wish I could tell you I really do. Most likely dead! There's like two versions, so... Bobby Dead could very well be... Hmm. 
Like Ishmael's in the book is the sole survivor, but if she potentially got thrown from the boat before everyone did come to pass and through storm that we kind of see just ended up not basically just probably even just assuming that everyone had died. Could also be quite possible. I'm so interested now in the Peter Pan angle though. God damn! You're pulling the song again. Oh, three waves. Shit. Oh, Smee's also part of this. Okay. Favored. Okay, dominating, dominating, dominating. Only one neutral is Banu and Ishi's first. Isong has the most damage done to him. And I can't do any of these because I do not have enough wrath. Probably not. Oh, I have. I forgot I got pursuance. And that's for and gloom and pride. Um. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Oh, perfect! You're doing it on Smee. Nice, Ryoshi. Struggles dominating. Gonna post. Gonna post. Well, we're just gonna do soda because that's what 
Gigi has the soda hat, so we should at least do one soda for the shrimp. Yeah, there's sometimes my way of just guaranteeing a win. Yeah, I use insanity, but at least I don't get their health diminished and they still want the fight to do damage. Even if it's not a lot of damage. There's a self mess. Well, there goes me, I think. Damage! Oh yeah, she's not in a good spot. Wait, stay... Better stay away. Laughing around me and you'll regret it. You have no idea who's looking out for me. What? It's... Don't forget now. Big brother. From the middle. Oh, a BB. In this quick wig, the middle put a pretty hefty bounty on her head, in case you didn't know. Oh, that's why they're interested in quick wig. She only dared to quit the middle, but she also decided to fall off the face of the earth. Now that's what you call prime stupidity. Given that the middle never forgets. Okay, are you finished? Wait, really? You're still going to kill me? It's our mess. I'm not about to leave any loose threads behind. It's the middle we're talking about. The middle. Do you know who they are? I don't. <laughs> I really don't. Ishmael, can I can I learn who the middle is before you kill her? <laughs> Wait, fine, fine. I'll tell you where your friend is. The shipping container you're looking for. We keep our living hostages in shipping container marked with a green triangle. And since he's a recent catch, you can find him on the east side, probably. Green triangle, huh? What if there's more than one of those? What if it's in a different shade of green? What if you're just lying to get out of a pinch? You should be able to tell! You should be able to tell right away! I'm serious, please! There you have it. I say there's more than enough confirmation. Happy now, Sinclair? Wow, I think I hurt myself. Just my Uh, Sinclair was frowning, but Ishmael didn't seem to care. She stood there, rumbling the wrist of her weapon arm. It almost appeared as though she was measuring the amount of strength she needed to turn Smee's head into pulp in one fell swoop. Wait, killing her could cause us a lot of trouble. We know where the hostage is, and I think that's good enough. Let's head back. I don't feel the need to convince you, manager. Kindly get out of my way. I don't want to waste any more time on this. You know what else is a waste of time? Killing me! How about we just go on our merry ways? I disagree. Ishmael! I can be pretty fast. Ishmael's eyes were still lost and wandering. She swung back at her hong poon, ready to strike, and before I even realized what I was doing, I was leaping in the way. Dante, are you insane? You're the one who's insane! You dare lay a hand on our executive manager? Was the insubordination not enough? Smart choice. If you killed me, a big brother or even a big sister would have gone after you. I recall the time when the exact opposite happened. When Ishmael leapt in front of me, taking the malfunction functioning machine's bullets in my place and called my name as her body liquefied. 
And though she had faith in my name alone, could make everything right again. Did you just- did you just take a harpoon for that bitch? I aimed a bit to the side, I would've hit you in the face, your stupid clock face, do you understand? Yeah, I do. Boy, you really do- Ed, what the heck out of that harpoon, this really hurts. What? Can you please stop it with your stupid goddamn quips? Decade manager. Her words and actions just now are more than enough to constitute a full-on mutiny. She made an attempt on the life of her direct superior. I can no longer sit idly by and watch, though you may not have the punitive authority. We must make the detailed report of these incidents and relay it to the higher-ups of the company. To discuss our further action, our future actions. It's okay, Otis. I chose to get in her way. This is not okay! <laughs> That individual has consistently and repeatedly caused serious setbacks to our mission. I kind of disagree, Otis, in terms of consecutively causing setbacks. Like, she's not necessarily doing the best outcome version things, but the mission is still progressing. Granted, it's already on hold just due to the fact that we don't have the, the before team person, but the mission itself is progressing. And Ishmael didn't necessarily cause any of the setbacks to occur. She didn't make the boat sink. She didn't make the boat take longer to get fixed. She did push for it not to be her time and say go to a different route, but I. And technically also saved us from getting crushed between the two ships in the first place. Even if she didn't pedal to get rid of, to get away from the tentacle part of things. <sighs> Otis, I said it's okay. I didn't take the harpoon for that woman, I took it for Ishmael. Huh? huh? What did you flip a switch and decide to become a humanitarian all of a sudden? That a little bit of a point. We've killed a lot of people. <laughs> we never had to dirty our hands with a drop of blood, not even once. You just sat back and ordered us to bloody ours in your stead. And now you're telling us to, what, ease up on murders? What are you even trying to say? That you don't want us to get traumatized anymore? Some touchy-feely shit like that? No, it's just my intuition. That probably wasn't very convincing, was it? No, of course not. Intuition comes from experience. From memories. You remember Jack all before the clock, Dante. How can I trust your intuition? That woman? I think she's in a pretty important position of power, at least. In this district. Killing her before thinking things through could complicate things. Did it not occur to you that not killing her could also complicate things? I just think that killing everyone in our way left and right like this it won't help us in the future. In the future, huh? Sorry, I can't and I don't have any better explanation for what I just did. I don't know how far in the future you're talking about, but I'm sure we have a different things in store for us there, Dante. Ah. Dante? Dante? Do not ever put yourself at risk in such manner again. You suck! Come on, that advice coming from one of you guys. Not very convincing. Responsibility of 12 lives weigh upon your shoulders, Dante. Thus, you must watch yourself 12-fold. 
Deadly still in that. Should you perish, we do not possess the means to bring you back. And once I cannot be brought back, leave behind an unbearable, painful void. Dante, don't you ever do that again, because if Yisong cries, I will cry. <laughs> Yisong was right. My shoulder was not an unbearable amount of pain. Wait, are you uh, all right, clockhead? Yeah, I'm good. The clock still works. What? That's not what... Hey, bugger. You're not, not all there, either. Or maybe it's just you who took a while to lose it, eh? And here I thought we had at least one sane person on the bus, but you're no different. Heathless shook his head and walked away. Yeah, we're all nuts. <laughs> Everyone is nuts. <laughs> ふんよんちゃんしよ。はあ。I think of all the shipping, I think all these shipping containers are full of... Right, let's not try to linger on that thought. Oh, right. Probably dead people. <laughs> but green triangle right there kind of thing. I try my best not to speculate about what terrible things that pir... Things the pirates might be hiding in that mountain of shipping containers. Okay. Hey, who's there? How'd you find this place? Ah, we're in the Trucksack's Hemo Container Man, you're a book of Ah, hey, we're just here checking out that shipping container with Green Triangle over there, and they'd be right out of your hair, okay? Let's take them out before anything worse happens to our agent. Okay, let the agent be alive, because I don't want an I told you so from Ishmael right now. I feel like we need to be doing her I told you so's to get her to calm the fuck down. <laughs> Ooh, no, that's great. Favored. Do a defense on that one. Oh yeah, she's still there. I see that little glow. And we're gonna do another defense on that one. Did. 
almost lost that ghost. Dominating. Good job. Okay, just all fight here. Probably. I can at least meet the person before I hit run out of stamina. But just for these recording sakes, I'm probably gonna stop this one when I hit no stamina. I don't know how I'm gonna edit these. Let's be real. I have no clue. I don't know if I'm gonna compile them into one longer video. To do like section one, two, three, and potentially separate for dungeon. I'll probably get an idea after I've at least gotten through more of this chapter. But I feel like I could edit this down into like one long video or one t or a couple parts kind of thing. Oh, please read out. Oh god. Okay, dominating, favor, dominating, dominating. Favor, dominating, favor, neutral, dominating. Yeah, it is neutral. Set at AOE. Rude. Rude. Ah. Dominating, dominating, favorite, favorite. Sir. Yeah. Time to rain. I know it's not their most damaging, but time to rain. My favorite ego. Still did one sixty four.
You were on turn six. Okay. Kinda glad I did that. And there's Stagger. Mom. Mom. And they're done. Kulung and Tan Shuels. Oh, book. Mr. Pilot. Team leader? This one's gotta be this shipping container. LCB team captain? Somehow not what I expected. I really thought I was stuck for. Name's Pilot, LCB's primary observation unit 3, the assistant manager. You're not the team leader? LCB team leader. Hey, I'm standing right here. What's with the obvious disappointment? Anyways, thank you for saving me. I've heard so much stories about you. The LCB, right? What kind of stories, I wonder? Happy to make your acquaintance, sirs and ladies. I've been a huge fan ever since I joined the company. Okay. Sinclair stuff was like a few months ago. So you're like a newbie. <laughs> uh, why are you all looking at me like that? Long story short, there was a whole mess with this other guy who claimed to be a fan, so yeah, you gotta understand. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, that too. Oh, and I have a message to deliver to you guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, I bet you guys are chaotically running around somewhere in New Corp like headless chessons and messing everything up. Time for OOS. Oh, obliteration of forehead. Uh, wait, I'm just delivering the message exactly as she said it. Annotations and all. Watch out, don't you think it would have been better to start with and I quote to tell us this, this and who is she? And who is this she is too? Abbreviations and omissions are two completely different things. I'll let this slide, fledgling. Just this once. Who is she? Well, of course it's not other than... Manager Missot herself. Huh? Sod? Is that what? Manager? Did she get promoted? She's still recovering, but the after team arrived just in the nick of time and treated her wounds, saving her life. I'm glad it wasn't a posthumous promotion. Manager Saw wanted to meet all of you too, but couldn't make it on account of her being on a different mission. Aww. I'm glad she's okay. She would have gone out like a badass, but that's so nice. Is Saw okay? Of course, it was a smooth recovery, but now she's healthy enough to eat some grub. 
it wasn't the smoothest recovery, but now she's healthy enough to eat some grub and hold a lengthy conversation. That's great, but I was asking because she lost her partner right before her, her eyes. Kind of? Effie was... Mercy by Otis. Uh. Mother produced a piece of old folded paper and began reading from it. Mr. Reminder to all LCB employees, we the before team are assigned the paramount task of fleeing the path before or anyone else does. Every bloodied step, every flesh as given becomes another stepping stone for your fellow Limbus Company's employees to follow into the future. That's the very first line from the new hire training guide we were issued. And I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the sacrifice we make. Most of our co-workers at LCB just want to make a quick buck before quitting and say, Hey, I'm the odd one, though. You're proud of sacrifice? Seriously? No, no, Ishii, what? He wants some sardine whale-flavored ice cream? No way, me too. Why don't we just go over there and get some? <laughs> Roja, defuse. <laughs> How are you so strong? <laughs> it's like up tiger to level four. Go get some ice cream. <laughs> Yoja, Yoja grabbed Ishmael's arm and began practically dragging her outside. Well, just in case she gets into another fight. I decided to steadily follow them from a distance. You you're gonna stop bringing down the mood like that. We saved his life, didn't we? I understand that things are a bit rough right now, but let's be a bit more patient, okay? Literally on that back there, that's just indoctrination. They're brainwashing them. No one wants to just admit that they're basically that they're throwing themselves into a meat grinder. So they wrap that neatly in the name of self-sacrifice. I know. Then why? People need a way to endure that reality and go on living somehow. Some people live from paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes they just don't have a choice. This also, this also feels connected to Roja, a chapter of people basically starving and being without food, and she knows that struggle of people just not having the ability but also needing to survive in the reality of not having anything else so ah uh, this chapter has been so good to like pick it up with those things that were established but also not really dealt with after the fact or let's hear out our overzealous friend how about that don't talk to onto me like you're cuddling some baby yeah. we're not that close to it, yeah. but i'll listen just this once fine fine Georgia seemed to have noticed that I was following them, them all along and signaled me with a quick wink. And I was able to return to where the other sinners were before they did.
Okay, now that we got that studs alive, what about the important information about where the bull the bull is? Tis injustice that thou hast left me out of thine ice cream jaunt. It tastes like fish, not worth the walk. Maybe they put ground mermaid in there. Ground mermaid in ice cream? Boy, I'm nervous with an audience, huh? T O S T O O F. O F with the obliteration of forehead. But. I'm sorry? Talk. S F S. Or suffer the obliteration of forehead. Okay. That explains it. <laughs> I appreciate your <laughs> translation. <laughs> I feel a bit better. No, you don't. <laughs> She's not lying. She'll do it. <laughs> she reminded me a lot of our LCB before team director just now. Must be a hell of a boss, huh? Rachel, don't be... Rachel, don't be proud of that. Uh, where do I begin? Oh, it's in the whale. It took us a hot minute to pinpoint the location of the bottom of court. Or pounce in the golden bow, actually. It, if it's not in the whale, I'm gonna be shocked. Or if it isn't in the whale, the whale's gonna eat it in the process of getting to it. <laughs> Me and my teammates, we ran a pretty tight ship. But the twin hook pirates of U-Corp Backstreet caught us all wind of us sniffing around. In here, lads, it's the cheapest spot of oil on all the Great Lake, I tell you. What? How? That's ridiculous. Are you telling me this whale oil of dubious origin is worth how much? What? Yeah, no wonder. You pretty much antagonized them to their faces. Okay, in my defense, those fellows were about to rob us blind. Couldn't you have just paid a bit of money for some intel, though? D well, anyway, uh, uh, y'all work for the same corporation. They're not paying shit. After a thorough search, we identify the exact location of the Corp branch with the Golden Bow. Did you find the Golden Bow? Yeah, we saw the fabled golden light too. Too bright yet not too bright, was it? I had to see you with my own eyes to understand what that meant. Boy, what an incredible incandescent glow. But that was, even from deep within the Lobotomy Court branch ship. Observation check, confirmation check, all we had to do left was on the docket was the report. Job, by the way, was advanced reconnaissance to confirm the presence of the Golden Bow. They said that plenty of advanced reconnaissance teams encounter abnormalities or get wiped out in the process. We were about to make our return journey considering the mission a resounding success when those pirates followed you guys there, huh? Team 
Team Leader Haru assured us that nothing was out of the ordinary and that these uh, interruptions by opposing parties happened all the time. But... I don't really care what you're doing all the way out here on this creepy ship, but... This gentleman here was rather curious about what business you guys were up to, so I tagged along. No objections, hmm? The pilot's face turned pale with fear for the first time since he started recounting the story. That's when I heard the weapons slip out of our team leader's hand and onto the ground. Our team leader is an experienced field agent with a decorated track record. She... I've never seen her just give up like that. She ain't the kind to be so easily rattled. So I turned to look her and the look on her face was... I say that was the look of resignation. Would I be correct in assuming that she had something to say at that moment? Mission failed, verbatim. Who'd she see to immediately give up like that? An officer from the middle should be here again, verbatim. Hmm. I'm guessing that guy had like a huge fancy tattoo that glowed purple? Huh? How'd you know? That's the very first thing we noticed about him actually. That weird looking purple glowing tattoo. We had a shot. We're unit 3 after all. We were no slouches. We just had some impressive... We have some impressive names with us. You didn't. And I don't recall much more after that. Oh, well, that's not good. But I came to a lot, it was on the floor face down. Well, that's good. First I thought I'd gone deaf and couldn't hear a thing, you know, when a bomb goes off right next to you and your ears start ringing and all. Thought I'd burst my eardrums. But that wasn't it. It was my team, shouting, screaming, shouting, screaming, screaming, and all of it combined in some sort of incomprehensible cacophony. I just couldn't register that at first. Once I recognized that, I noticed a deep rumbling echoing underneath all that. A bizarre trembling rumbling sounded like it was echoing from a place far away from the branch. Bizarre rumbling. Yes, ma'am, it was almost like a distant explosion that seemed like the others were... And it seemed like others were picking up on that odd noise, too. The pirates suddenly started acting all nervous. And even the big brother from the middle was rattled. They all called him Big Brother? Did you hear that right? I guess there really was a big fish looking out for the pirates. Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear, they called him Big Brother. <laughs> I wonder how those fools are doing nowadays. How much does your background overlap with the middle, Ryoshu? Take out all the high-level hostages we're leaving now. That right there is one of the five calamities. We have to book it, book it before the thing gets here. We're all dead meat if we don't. One one last thing I remember is our team leader. 
Ever for our last consciousness, the team leader, she... Stuck her employee card badge onto my chest when the pirates weren't looking. Back then I don't, didn't understand what she was doing, but now that I've had some time to think about it, she did that so I'd look more valuable, so that they take me in hostages instead of leaving me to die. Me who's just a rookie. To summarize, every LCB agent was either injured or unconscious. Mill got involved out of nowhere, and then there was calamity that even the middle bloke was scared of. Can you give us the coordinates to the Lobotomy Corp branch, Mr. Pilot? Of course. The pilot produced a piece of paper that had been folded over many times and handed it over to Faust. So right there, ma'am, down to every last bit of detail you'll need, I hid it from them to the best of my abilities. I'm glad I was able to complete my mission, at least. Wait, that calamity, was there anything else about it that stood out? Kind of being pale. Malfoy's color, unlike anything I'd laid my eyes on before, was a uh, towering and pallid, and that rumbling. I'm sure I've heard it of it before. Oh, oh, right. It reminded me of you, Corp Singularity, that rumbling sounded a lot like them tuning force when they combine stuff together. Yeah. Yeah, almost there. Let me tag along with y'all. Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> I could be your guide on the Lobotomy Court branch. Indeed, this was supposed to be a joint operation where the LCB, where they were supposed to accompany us to the Lobotomy Court branch. It's a bad idea. <laughs> What is your decision, Dante? Tell him while I appreciate his offer, I decline. The people that get involved with us often don't make it out of out in one piece. Sod is somehow an exception. <laughs> I a. We just saved your life, mate. Show us some gratitude. Thank you. Mr. Pilot, remain on standby until the after team arrives. Then return to base and report all your findings. Ah, uh, so they declined, huh? The stories were true. I don't hear nothing but the ticking of their clock. They need to thank you for your offer. I remember to thank you. All right. You seem like ready to die. <laughs> Granted, I guess that's kind of what that paper he read earlier was kind of about. He's all sort of brainwashed into the self-sacrifice bit. Ah, oh, well then, best of luck to y'all. That's all I needed. Bye. Ah. <sighs> Ishmael was the first to leave the room. Well, this meeting was pretty short-lived. But say hello to Saad for us, will you? And please tell her that I'm thankful for what she did for us. Back then, I couldn't bring myself to tell her even that. I'll be sure to tell her that. 
You've endured Good. well despite Time the tribulations, Pilot. Oh, it appears to me that he deserves such words. You're such a good boy. <laughs> That's a more normal reaction to start crying, pilot. <laughs> he wants his team again. Uh... <laughs> You're also kind to me, me being the rookie of the team and all. Maybe, maybe there are survivors at the Lobotic Corps branch. That might be more of a reason why he wants to come. Pilot's eyes, which had been welling up for a while, eventually broke like a dam. Tears flowed down his cheeks to the ground. We shall bring them home. You have my word. And mine too. We won't fail again. I have examined the variable coordinates Mr. Pilot provided us. What exactly are variable coordinates? Ships of beyond a certain magnitude, like our Lobotomy Corp branch or the Marion Port, receive partial laws of the Great Lake in an encrypted form from U Corp. Yukar pulls a strict monopoly on the intel regarding the laws of the Great Lake within the nest. Of course, the vessels that receive that intel pay various prices for that privilege. They use that partial information to calculate at which location their vessel must be during which specific period to ensure a safe voyage and finalize it into a standardized form known as variable coordinates. Poor ships often send out their coordinates to other vessels as they want to host as many guests as possible, but vessels that prioritize privacy and secrecy, like the former Elkhart branch in question, will never do so. So the Lobotomy Corp branch we're looking for is kind of like a treasure ship, huh? So there's got to be a black market out there for people willing to pay big money for its coordinates. Impressive deduction. Unlike normal coordinates, variable coordinates are composed of lengthy and encrypted codes. Therefore, vessels sailing across Great Lakes start by entering variable coordinates of their destination. Based on that information, said vessels will follow a certain route charted via the automated navigation system that periodically confirms the current location of their destination. That's a lot of big words. So basically, if we enter the information we got from Mr. Pilot here, we can somehow find our way to the Bon Macor branch. It's useless in the waters of the outskirts beyond the borders of U Corp. <laughs> Indeed, but the Lobotomy Corps branch is within the U Corps borders. We will have no trouble analyzing the vessel's travel patterns as long as we have its variable coordinates. Gotcha, then let's get a move on. Isang and Sinclair nodded with determination while the other sinners followed suit and hurried on. Though I didn't catch a clear view, I think Ishmael nodded too. I 
think she's simmering down. Though maybe not quite, because now the whale is coming. 